Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. Uh, I have something pretty important for you guys and girls today. Uh, this little part here which I was testing out so I could show you guys what it means to have items and inventory and why we did inventory uh, and make it into a item array here, not a weapon or an armor array. Now, bear with me. I know a lot of you guys might know this already because you've been checking out my videos and you've probably done this in school or whatever. But this is a really important part. So if you know everything about what what it says here, what the hell is happening, all this, then go ahead and skip forward in the video, all right? To like about five, six minutes ahead because, or just skip a little bit, see where I am. But uh, let me just take this one more time and tell you guys what the hell happens with all these classes and how it works uh, for us. All right, so let's just start an item. So you know item is a regular class, right? Or it's you think it's a regular class because it has everything any other class has. But it has this little function here. This is a pure virtual function. All right, and this makes this whole class abstract. And what does that mean? Well, we cannot make objects of item class. We can make pointers of them, but we can't do this. Item, item three. It's gonna say, object of abstract class type item is not allowed and you know why because this is a kind of a template I've gone through this before but I'm just recapping for everyone who might have forgot or who might be lost as we start working with items and weapons and stuff so having an abstract class means that you have a template which you cannot create in its on its own you cannot just create a building of the actual paper of the blueprint right you, you have to look at the blueprint gather materials and make something I don't know if that's a good analog but somehow it makes sense in my head but at least weapon and armor all inherit from weapon alright weapon is a child class to item and item is the parent class and since item is a pure virtual f a class or a abstract class we can't create item in its own on its own but we can create stuff that inherits from item now, if weapon also was an abstract class, we wouldn't be able to create it. But in weapon, we don't have any pure virtual functions. And the only thing that makes an, a class abstract is when you have equals to zero on any function, anything. That means that the inheriting classes, like weapon, the child classes of item, have to, in, have to define this function. They have to have this function. Any function that you do this with, they have to have it. And this is a way of making sure that the child classes have some kind of basic functionality that this template wants to provide. So it wants to tell us that, okay, you have to have a clone function in weapon and armor or anything that inherits. So we do, we create a clone function here. And as long as we have that, we have a perfectly good class working. Obviously, we need all this other stuff, but I mean, that's all it requires. But still, we, we go into weapon.cpp. Now we'll see what is this. Now you might know this as well, but just for you guys who might have forgot, it returns a copy of itself. All right, it it returns a new copy of itself, a new. It actually allocates memory, and if we do not point something to this clone function, it's going to be lost. We're going to have a memory leak because we are using new. We're using a new operator, and that's going to just going to put something new in the heap, and we need something to point to that. So let me show you. The whole thing and by the way the same thing happens in armor it's the basically the same exactly the same thing it's just that it's a different type it has its own functions all right since the things that are specific to weapon are these two functions and these two uh, variables and everything in item is inherited right in weapon so weapon is part item and part weapon that's why we call the item constructor in the weapon constructor right here you know why? Because weapon has a part of, I mean, a part of weapon is an item, right? It creates the item first, and then it on top of that, it creates the weapon stuff. So we only define all this special part of the weapon here, just to recap. And everything is el else is called by the item constructor itself, which we have here. All right? So it's kind of a chain reaction right there. Anyway, recapping that, that's good. Now, what the hell am I doing here? Well, I created a weapon and an armor. These are objects, all right? They work. You can create them. Now, th these were nullified by the uh, by the null or the, the default value. See here? So, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, whatever. So, uh, that's fine in game. Just This is just like a test thing. I'll remove this after the test is done. But we make a weapon and an armor. We have two item pointers 
which their their own get their own like weapon and they get an armor. See how the item pointer can point to both two different classes? I mean you couldn't you couldn't make a new game and point it to item. I mean item has nothing to do with game, but a weapon is an item and an armor is an item. So you can use the base class pointer to point to these two. And that means that you know, yeah, sure, you get all the item values from the weapon into this pointer. This pointer is pointing to the item part of the weapon. You cannot access the damage parts of weapon through this pointer. You cannot access the armor specific parts of of the the armor through this pointer. You can only access everything that item has to offer. All right, so that's an issue because we might want to access the weapon part of this while still having item pointing to it. Okay, we don't want to make a new weapon pointer and point to to the weapon. We don't want to do that. We want to have a generic pointer, something that can point to both of these. Like in an array, you don't have different types of pointers. You have one pointer type that can point to different things, like if you have if you have them inherited like this. So basically, I hope you understood that. But what you do then is you you create a weapon pointer at a specific point. All right, you don't you can do this anytime you want to access the weapon part. That means you can still have the item pointer right here, but you, you create a new weapon pointer, just temporary, and then you dynamic cast item to a weapon pointer. And if that works, it's gonna this is gonna work. If if a weapon is not a part of item, it's gonna return a null pointer. And that way you can check if an item is an armor or a weapon. Alright? So um because what you can do is you can actually do this if w is not not equals null pointer if you want to check something then you can do this uh, c out w now you see you can get damage min and max let me just take damage max whatever new line but if I try to access damage min and max from item, which we know is pointing to a weapon, we cannot get the, the, those functions because item doesn't support those. Item has no clue about those, but weapon does. So that's why we do this. And this way we can check if weapon is armor or a, uh, what do you call it? Or, or a something you know or a weapon sorry i just i don't know why that i forgot that but but yeah there we go and then uh what if we try to do this what if we try to do this what if we try to do armor uh, pointer a equals we'll just copy this we'll try to dynamic cast it to an armor pointer okay and item which we know is pointing to a weapon not an armor then we'll say Uh, if a is not a null pointer, uh, then we will a get defense because defense is armor specific. So we'll see if this works. All right, let's run this. And I hope you're kind of getting the point of this. So zero, but the other one didn't print. This one didn't print. All right, but what if we do this? What if we do this? Is item 2. We try to cast item 2 to a uh, armor pointer, which we know is pointing to an armor. Then we get both the zeros because it in fact sees that, okay, item 2 is pointing to something that is part of an armor and we can dynamic cast it to armor. That's fine. It's all good. Let's do it. And then it does it and then you get this out. So this is the thing we want to do when we look and remove all this now. When we want to add items and armors and what whatnot. All right, so that's what we do. And the clone function makes it easier for us to shove stuff into this whole, this, this inventory. All right, this inventory thing right here. And let's see, we'll get the item at that point. We'll get the pointer and then at add, we create a new item. And as we let's go into inventory.cpp 
Uh, where do we use clone? Yeah, clone helps really much here, right here, for example. It, it gives it itself, kind of. So you don't have to do a bunch of stuff in inventory to, uh, to account for there being different types of items. And that's basically where you need it the most, I'd say. So that's good. So how about we just leave all this open. Let's go to game. Or let's go to event. And let's say... Let's say... Um, we have a name. Buy value, sell value, rarity. How many rarities do we want? I think we want... Uh, if we go into item... Rarity. Let's make an enumeration here. Enum... Rarity... Enums are just integers with names, basically. Or... or, or, or yeah, basically that's what it is. So we'll say co Common... Uncommon... So common is zero, zero rarity. Uncommon is one automatically because we start at zero. Uncommon, um, common, uncommon. What else do you have? Well, you have rare. Common, uncommon, rare. Uh, legendary. And then you have mythic. I'd say mythic sounds cool. All right, so we have we have these different types of rarities now, and that's cool. That's good. Zero, one, two, three, four. So four, five rarities. Um, let's say uh, modifiers static. What else can we do? We can do cell value, level, name, damage, static. Do we have a dynamic array? We do. I'll put that into D array right there. One thing I want to do is I want to make a D array of st or, or s string names. Uh, wait. The array is not as. Oh, I have to use std here, right? The array is not a template. Oh, I think I really badly. Item, I, I manip. Oh, well, now it worked. What the hell? Weapon event. Has D array. Item has all this stuff. What the hell? Weapon has item. Item event. Okay, I don't even know what the hell's going on, but we'll just leave it like it is. That seems to work. So, okay. Uh, static void init names. I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to go up. What the hell is going on? D array dot h. Okay, so what includes D array? Event includes D array and character puzzle. This is what I don't do good sometimes. I I really screw up the includes. Enemy and inventory. Weapon and armor. Good lord, have mercy. So what includes event? That's what I have to find. Find. Puzzle, weapon. Did I already find a game includes events? Okay, game includes events. Ah, oh, it's insane. It's insane. Well, I kind of need. I'm gonna have to fix this later. I don't want to waste your time with this bullcrap right now. Let's just go into item, and let's just say vector. For now, and then I'll fix it later. But or we can just leave it as a vector; it doesn't really matter. Um, names, init names. Copy that. Copy both of these actually. 
go into item and this is how you do static uh, static std vector are you serious int assumed That's ridiculous. You know what? That's ridiculous. I don't even know. I don't even know what the hell's going on. Something's really buggy. Something's really weird. Uh, but we're gonna have to look into that. I'm gonna have to look into that. But whatever. It's 15 minutes long, so we still gotta end the video. I'm sorry. This video has been a little weird. But we've just I just explained what I'm gonna do. But before I leave you, let me just go in here and let me go ahead and make a randomize. Uh, weapon randomized yeah you know what we could do that we could do that let me just make an item let me just set it up for the next video at least uh, let me do this and go into your item and just make a little default constructor thing that's good and then we're gonna say this name equals I are uh, whatever something none for now this level well you do actually get the level from the so you'll just randomize it from a level which is okay uh, so that's all you give it you give it a level and it's gonna take care of that for you so level equals rand level this uh, by value equals level multiplied by this rarity so I guess we'll do that uh, and then the cell value as well times 10 I guess something like that so let's just say times 10 uh, we got to do this rarity equals random between uh, I know it's not supposed to be that easy to get a legendary or mythic but we'll fix that as well this is just to set up cell value cell value equals this by value divided by 2 sounds like a good good kind of cell value rarity name level that's it so that's a random item which you'll get and then we'll make sure that weapon and armor also have that type of a constructor but thanks for watching sorry again for the slow kind of video I'll work on it in the next one I'll try to fix all the problems uh, with the includes and everything but yeah thanks for watching take care and I'll see you in the next one right bye bye